Hello, and welcome to another episode of the IA Talks AI, the Investment Association's new podcast series covering everything to do with artificial intelligence and the investment management industry. I'm your host, James King, and I'm delighted to be joined by two guests today. Both are AI experts operating in the fintech space. We have Ada Toyise Adadokan, Managing Director at Maycode, and Sultan Mahmood, IQ EQ Digital, uh, and your partner there. So thank you both gentlemen for coming on the show. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Uh, so maybe we could start, uh, if you could just tell our listeners a bit more about yourselves. Um, Ada Toyise, maybe we could start with you. Could tell us about yourself and a bit more about Maycode, please? Sure. Uh, I said, uh, my name is Adito Ishe, Adito Ishe, Adito, and uh, thank you for having us, uh, James, at the IA. Uh, Mako is a boutique consulting firm that um, helps in the area of our regulation, technology, and data. Uh, we work predominantly here in London, in Luxembourg, and also in Geneva. Uh, uh, and um, that's a quick summary of mass, uh, Mako. Uh, as for myself, I've worked in the industry for about uh, 16, 17 years. Uh, spe- specifically uh, in the area of uh, compliance. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Sultan? Hi. Um, so my background is in AI and automation. So prior to IQEQ Digital, I used to be the head of AI and automation for PwC across Europe, Middle East and Africa. And um, I love doing all things AI and uh, it's really taken off over the last uh, 12 months. It certainly has. Uh, and on that note, um, it'd be good to get uh, your perspectives, each of you, on, on what is actually exciting you the most about AI at the moment. Um, I, I'm a new joiner when it comes to um, uh, enthusiasm around AI. Um, I, I was having this chat with Sultan about a year ago around um, AI itself. <laughs> and he introduced a certain concept and discussion from um, uh, the uh, the chat GPT that was about to launch at that point, uh, to many other elements of um, uh, trendy technologies like a Web3 metaverse. So as a compliance person, uh, that's technically should not be my area of interest, but um, his passion ignites my passion uh, to look into what the heck is my friend talking about uh, in this space. And that's exactly where my journey started about a year ago. And I've been really passionate about this since then, hence uh, why we have this meeting today. Yeah, so I've been doing AI um, for a number of years and uh, four or five years ago when you were talking to clients about AI, they were saying, what are you on? Um, is it going to work? Are you talking about something that's blue sky stuff? And then, you know, um, in the last year, ChatGPT happened and everybody's now on the generative AI space and AI has become central to boardrooms and board strategies going forward. And I think I really enjoy how um, how companies are now thinking about how they, they transform themselves using AI and using the new technologies that are available. And there's so much innovation in this space, which is something that you know is changing the landscape every week, every month. There's something new coming out as well. So this really excites me uh, being in the AI space. Well, I, I completely agree. I think you're you're spot on. There. There's so much innovation and things are moving very fast. Can I get your views on how you see AI applications continuing to develop in the future? Yeah, that's a that's a very good question because, um, you know, I, I did a picture, a cartoon the other day, which said um, the board is saying, when can we have generative AI? And the IT guys are struggling trying to keep the lights on. Um, and I think, you know, the, the enthusiasm is there, but how do companies use AI effectively is being worked through now. And I think some companies are playing with pilots, some companies are a bit further ahead, but how does an enterprise fully use AI effectively across its processes, across its organization? And we've come up with a with a concept um, in, in our product, which we call IntelliX Core, which is based on patterns. So if you take, uh, if you take ChatGPT as an example, right? ChatGPT solves a pattern, which is around document understanding or knowledge understanding. So, you know, it's great at, uh, you know, Q&A where you can upload documents, uh, do Q&A around those. That is just one of those patterns. To truly enable an enterprise to use AI effectively, you need to have all 25 patterns that we've defined. And another example of a pattern may be um, a pattern for personalization, a pattern for recommendation. And 
what I think will happen in terms of technology going forward is that we enterprises will adopt this concept of what we call agents, AI agents, a bit like you know digital workers or digital workforce you might have heard about in the RPA days. So there will be alongside your human workforce digital uh, or agents which will solve particular AI patterns, and the these agents will be consumed by. Um, by other applications and by people through either a web interface or through an API interface, and they will solve particular AI use cases. So you can imagine a plethora of AI agents or bots, you call them, and they all got different use cases, a bit like you know how human workers have their own roles, they've been trained on a particular type of role, and they then uh, basically carry out that activity. So that's, that's kind of my view of uh, how enterprises will effectively start using AI uh, going forward. That's really interesting what you say about the, the AI agents. Would you be able to bring that to life, the listeners, a bit? Like any examples, perhaps? So, uh, so a very simple uh, agent might be, um, suppose you uh, want to create a recommendation for somebody. So let's say a client is looking at a particular banking product uh, or a particular asset management product, and you want to understand their profile, and you want to recommend some new products to them. So what you would do in that particular instance is go to the agent, which is called the recommender agent, give it the information about that particular client, and it would re return a response which says, these are the recommendations that are applicable for this particular client. Now, that's just a very, very simple example. You can have a much more complicated examples. So in the compliance space, for example, uh, you, you could have examples which says, you know, I need to understand what the latest compliance regulations are. So I have an agent that constantly monitors the different compliance recommendations that are coming out, the, the different rules and regulations that are coming out, and then alerts the person back saying, these are the applicable uh, notifications or regulations you should be taking into account. And I can think of many examples, I could talk all day about that, but uh, we'll run out of time for that. <laughs> we, we certainly will. Fascinating stuff. Thank you. And um, Aditya, can I bring you in on this, please? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I can zoom in a little bit into the, the compliance space. And if you think about compliance, the fundamental part of compliance starts with um, re regulations that um, uh, each uh, entity, regulated entities, needs to comply with. And with this documentation, each of these entities needs to have a person, in this case, uh, the Chief Compliance Officer or the other compliance, who is responsible for reviewing those um, regulations, let's just call it documents, for easy sake. All of these uh, documents need to be reviewed and to check the applicability to the business which um, uh, they are into. What he's just explained is exactly what the chatbots will do. Uh, uh, the bot, he said, right? Yeah. Uh, in that case, uh, the bot becomes the compliance assistant that have clarity and understanding of um, the documents, which uh, now regulations which we're talking about, and we'll be able to effectively advise. You can imagine 2,000, 3,000, 10,000, 100,000 documents, regulations across the world. It will be able to advise uh, based on the documents which has been fed into it which if you think humanly, it's almost impossible for us to have that um, one uh, intuition to be able to bring that to life very, very quickly. Uh, what human beings or what we bring uh, to the table in this is that know-how, those uh, nuances when it's not black and white, when it's not just yes or no uh, questions, especially in the area of uh, compliance. And that's why this is very exciting because the part which I've just described is about 50 to 60% at a minimum of a typical compliance duty uh, in that space. And um, could you explain to us how this is a step beyond, for example, using a general large language model to attempt to do the same thing? Like, What's different about, about this approach? So um, even we, we, we can use that example uh, to zoom in in compliance itself. So if this is only a compliance generalist, it means they have a very broad knowledge of different elements of our regulation. But if you speak of a compliance specialist, they can tell you specifically on each regulation the same way the general language model is very broad on various things, so not trained on specific things, which is what he was describing. Uh, in this case, this will be a dedicated officer, uh, the board, responsible for compliance. So these boards have clarity of knowledge depending on um, the vast uh, data which it has been fed and trained and the jurisdiction which you want it to focus 
on. So this has specific information, not just from uh, the generic knowledge. This is not like uh, going to Google to check uh, how do I do a compliance program. This will be specific as per how it's been prescribed or described in these various regulations. And across jurisdictions also, depending on uh, where you want it to focus on. So if we talk about division of labor and specialization, this is exactly what it means. So specializing in specific things, that's what it does. Yeah, I mean, I would say, look, um, this is an agent which is specifically trained on compliance uh, related matters. And so therefore, you know, if you go to a standard large language model, you'll often find that the language model hallucinates because it's been trained on generic data. Whereas if you've got an agent that's been specifically trained for a, a narrower purpose, then it won't hallucinate. It will give you much more accurate information. So think of this as an agent that's been trained from a compliance perspective. But uh, you know, uh, this this is this is back to what I was saying. There will be different agents that emerge for different use cases, different purposes, and we're already doing work with uh, with big banks ar around this. You know, where we're helping implement agents in the compliance functions. Excellent. Well, it sounds like um, there must be a bit of a development journey behind all this. Would you be able to tell us a bit more um, mm -hmm. what that's been like, and if there have been any challenges that you've had to overcome along the way? Yeah, I, I think that's. Um, they're, they're, the development journey has been very, very interesting. So, um, so if you take, for example, um, the simplest, the most well-known pattern, which is around you know uh, large language models, it doesn't really actually solve any problem because it gives you some more information. You've asked for information, it gives you some more information. But in the real world, it doesn't work like that. In the real world, you want to be able to take that information, maybe create a new document. Maybe uh, you know, give that visibility to, to to some people around that document, get some approval process, and so on. So what we've had to do is construct not just the agents, but all the workflow around it, and how do you handle uh, different requests that are made to different agents, so you can link them together to execute an end-to-end -end process. And uh, that's a very exciting place at the moment. We've we've uh, we've as I said, we've been working on twenty-five agents. We've got uh, seven agents completed. We'll have the next. A uh, lot completed over the next month or so. Uh, we've got a couple of clients already using it, but it'll be a very interesting, exciting space. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, there's an exciting news which I think is our audience also needs to hear about, uh, which is a solution for comply, which we introduced into the market. It's the first time we're talking about it in the public. Uh, it's a solution that is specifically tailored to write uh, policies and procedures. And um, uh, in that space, it helps um, uh, a compliance officer, or you can call it your junior compliance officer, uh, to help come up with a draft, either by updating your code policy or by starting afresh to develop your new, uh, your new policy. This solution uh, should or would help to um, uh, increase effectiveness by at least around 20 to 30 percent at the start. It would increase as it learns uh, the patterns which. Uh, uh, Sultan described earlier on more and more about uh, the particular uh, entity and uh, the uh, the way the compliance uh, chief or chief compliance officer is writing their policy. It will increase more and more. And in terms of cost, it's certainly uh, with thirty percent or call it a junior compliance officer, it's certainly a huge value for money uh, in that space. And that is comply. Another very interesting element which we want to introduce also today uh, is a solution called TT, which is um, as compli a compliance. Uh, compliance gets various questions here and there around, um, uh, 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 take for example, in this time, gift and entertainment place uh, uh, policy, where you can only accept certain amounts. Uh, when you uh, visit a client or when clients visit you. So you want to know, can I receive or can I accept this gift? Uh, those are the questions which you can ask um, uh, 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 TT. TT will respond to you to give you what the regulation says, will advise you, uh, like, a compliance officer would do to say this is the regulation, this is the limit, and this is the scope of what, what is acceptable. And these two new solutions, they are just one of many which we are introducing, especially uh, in the compliance space to help uh, using generative AI uh, answer compliance questions, uh, to help uh, to write policies and procedures. And there are so many other use cases which we will be introducing to help uh, the whole compliance program as it goes. Thank you. Certainly, that's been um, absolutely fascinating to hear all about that. Um, and on, on that note, um, I think we'll leave it there.
Um, thank you both very much for coming in and thank you to everyone uh, for listening. Please do join us again for the next episode very soon.